So welcome welcome into this in week. to the latest edition of Extra Time. We have been getting your tweets you in, and we are job, happy right? to be answering yeah. them. <laughs> 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 Let Kay do her job. What, what, what is it with well, you? She's well, she's not got the questions. So basically, questions, I haven't got the questions in It'll front of me, but it will come up on the screen, so it's fine. I've got Shepard with me. I can change your face. You want me to go get the questions? Nedim will do the driving. Nedim will drive. Oh, no, 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 I need to do that. I'm new. I'm new. No, too late. I'm new. Thanks for being such a caballero. Too late. OK, so the questions are coming. Oh, look who's already in. Yeah, another Jan, day off. How did Jan <laughs> skip ahead of the Thank queue you, LA. to get what his question gents. in? If only, the, if only the rest of the guys would have offered you, to do did that. Did you see that quickness? Never mind, that was the general one. The quickness. Should still be playing. That, change your pace. Uh, <laughs> Jan Agafiotov <laughs> can't have a day off. He said, who said Italy would win the Euros? I want to know what time he sent that tweet, because I bet he sent it when it was nil-nil. Do you know what? I have to say, in his defence, I put out the tweet in extra time, not for extra time, in extra time of the Italy game, and that's when he sent it. You sure? I, I yeah, think well, so. And the thing, the good thing about Twitter is we can go and see the time. Okay, so, so what he's asking is, who said the team that just got through would win the Euros? Right, yeah. right. You. So, you. But, so there's no problem because but, they just no, got but, through. But, but, but we're just answering what, the question. Yeah, it's, you it's, know it's what he's really doing? It's simple as it's, 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 it's you, it's you. It's fine because really he's just blowing his own trumpet because I think he said Italy would win the right. Euros. So now you're yeah. agreeing with Jan. And that's the thing oh. that you should be concerned yeah, about. That's uh, no. So the tables have turned. Yeah, never mind. Yeah, That's a great, yeah, perfect. Okay, Mrinal Mendon. What is the preparation of relative to a relatively less talented team like what is the preparation of a relatively less talented team like uh -huh. against powerhouses like Italy and Spain <laughs> I can ex I can speak from experience here <laughs> well, well I'll let you say Alec <laughs> well I mean when you're playing against or preparing to play against Argentina or Brazil as many times that we did that one of the realizations, stark realizations that you have as a player and as a professional is that you can do everything that you've been asked to do. And you can do it right. And the preparation could have been perfect. And then you go to the game and all those things that you worked on that you think you're doing so very well, if they are at their best, they're still gonna beat you. Mm. That for a professional is a slap in the face because your whole life you've thought, I work hard, if I prepare myself, if we, if we watch tape, if we practice, if we're doing repetitions, if we're scoring goals in training, it's all gonna show up on the field. None of those things showed up in the field against <laughs> Brazil or Argentina or what have you. However, I would also say the other side of that conversation is that there are times in which if you do it perfectly and you carry it out the game plan perfectly, if they have a down game, now you have a chance. And we did that a few times, both against Argentina and against Brazil, and it gave us an opportunity to truly compete, beat Argentina World Cup qualifiers, tie Brazil away from home. Those are things that were unheard of for all of us. But we needed the best of ourselves and then to be a little bit down from their usual level. And that's obviously coming up against Brazil or an Argentina, but even at the club level, Shaka, what's it like when you're going in and you're facing the top team in the league and you know you've got to really you know, so get you're, yourselves you're, ready for it. To Ali's point, you, you go through the opposition, all the threats that they have, how you can neutralize that, and then all of a sudden it hits you, well, what do we do when we get over the half line? You, you plan for them. <laughs> you plan for how you're going to stop them, and you have absolutely no idea what's going to happen when you get over the half line. In, in all seriousness, regardless of, of who you are, how much of an underdog you are, you know that you're going to have five or ten minutes spell in the game at some point. And you have to somehow figure out how you're going to make that count. And the rest of the 80 minutes, you just pile bodies on the line and hope for the best. I can tell you about the preparation against Argentina uh, for World Cup qualifier. So Messi, obviously, is going to be on the field. So they had us tied up with this elastic bands on the hip. So two lines of four or whatever we were playing at the time, all of us were tied up to the, to the side and to the back. So when the whole team, when one person moved, the whole team had to move, otherwise everybody's tripping over each other. That's how the elastic bands work. And so we had a whole week of playing together on a field defensively with this elastic bands wrapped around our waist. And the whole idea was, 
whenever Messi was on the right hand side and he started cutting inside, first guy would step, then the second step, the second guy would step, third guy would step, eventually somebody's gonna get him. They took those elastic bands off, right? And then they put one of the kids from the U20s, left footed kid, right? Skillful, he was gonna be the Messi. First time he grabbed the ball and started dribbling, people just went, wham, wham, wham. That's how we're going to deal with Messi. Yeah, moral of the story is you probably can't deal yeah. with Messi. Yeah, yeah. Elastic pads or not. Um, Dan the Orange Man, um, I'll come to you with this, Nadem. A Man City targeting Jack Grealish because it would be too embarrassing to bring Sancho back after he left the club for such a small few. Is Grealish actually the better player? Um, small fee. Uh, I think Grealish is a different type of player. I don't think the two are the same. And ultimately, as far as City bringing people back, I'm, think, I'm trying to think, they have brought players back in the past. I think there was um, So there's play... hope for you yet, Nedham? <laughs> oh, I don't know, I think that was left <laughs> a long time ago. But there was a player, I I'm picturing, but I can't remember his name, he was playing for uh, Red Bull Leipzig. He was a left back. RB Leipzig. Angelino. RB Leipzig, yeah, Angelino. Uh -huh. they, they, they brought people back like that, people who came through the academy and so on. So in terms of a pride situation, I don't think that really affects them. But in terms of the two players, I think Grealish and Sancho are ultimately different. They might look similar in some ways, but it's two different types of players. And I think for City, Grealish might be a great fit. And all the rest of them, right? Well, if, if they're all willing to come, yeah. Could uh, just make the car bigger? And we <laughs> got a driver. Tony. <laughs> Says, Ale, is Jorginho underrated? <laughs> Stuart Robson. <laughs> uh, I think Jorginho is a very good passer of the ball, and as long as his team is controlling the pace of the game, he becomes very important. When his team has full control of the rhythm of the game, then he is critical to their success because he's so very good at getting the ball from one side to the other and really maintaining the tempo of the game. Very good pass for the ball. If his team is under pressure and he has to defend, <gasps> mommy, <laughs> mommy, <laughs> that's a different story. I think I'll add to that though, if possible. No, I please think, go ahead. I think if his team's under pressure and they're open, I yeah. think he looks poor. But when I watched him in the Champions League final, mm. his team were controlling the game in a different way because they were all back and everybody was in the same position, in the right positions. And he looked very, very good then because he was incredibly organized. But as we saw today in that game, if it turns out into a foot race mm -hmm. anywhere, I would not be uh, fancying him too much. I am. Um, I missed one. To you, I saw it. Yeah, so I, oh, I saw it. I saw it out the corner of my eye. Yeah. I, I see that you didn't flag it up and tell me that I'd missed one. No, no. Why I'll would just that listen. be? I, I am. I am new here, so I don't really want to say too much if I don't <laughs> well, get asked well, the question. that hasn't stopped you. Oh well, please <laughs> say a lot here because Frank LeBuff would like to know, Nadem, how happy are you for your good friend Mancini's success at the tournament <laughs> yeah. so far? Yeah, Frank LeBuff is after me, isn't he? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, I like to hear this. Guys, so the best thing about ESPN FC is it allows me to come and speak and bring. I'm seeking closure about things in my life. Oh, well, uh, that's not exactly how uh, it works here. Okay, because you guys. If you have you an guys, open wound, we go right after you, well, to that. To be fair, that's the thing. You've all gone through. You got through some it. salt just to pour in. No, it. listen, I'm just playing along at the moment. As a person, I don't know him. As but from a coach, I know exactly what he was like. Uh -huh. So the success that he brings, I understand it because I've seen him bring success to a. To, Listen, I'm a Man City fan, and they won the league for the very first time whilst he was a manager, uh -huh. and I see why it happened. Right. So if, I, like... take, if I put the emotion over there, uh -huh. and I arrive here with just an understanding of who he is and what he does, uh -huh. then great. It Italy seems like you're doing convincing great. yourself. You're trying to Italy, convince I'm yourself. This, this is the closure. Italy are doing great. He's a very he snappy have... dresser, he looks oh, great. Oh, he looks a million dollars every single day. <laughs> <laughs> every <laughs> single day. No one know. Hey. Yeah. I was wondering why they gave us these yeah. awkward chairs. It's a therapy couch. <laughs> 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 yeah. Put your feet up but, there. But he's grabbing oh, the oh, I really like oh. Mancini. <laughs> let's, let's, just, let's just be clear. Whatever I had in the past, the fact is I've got them winning the whole tournament. So clearly I've moved on. So clearly, oh, well. yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> Maybe that was uh, part of the uh, therapy. <laughs> that was part of the exercise. What, what are you, 12 steps? <laughs> yeah. That was one of the 12 <laughs> steps. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta let it go. <laughs> you gotta gone, let it go. Pick gone. them to win something. All right. Um, for Shaka from Michael Magic. For Shaka, who is the GOAT? Is it Pele or Brazilian Ronaldo? Last year you said it was Pele, and yesterday you said it was Brazilian Ronaldo. Yeah, huh. Are you going to make up your mind? Are you? I'm gonna go with Maradona today. <laughs> <laughs> Take that. Take that. That's all. That's it. You're just gonna go, that's it? Yep. Who are you gonna go with next week? 
Well, we'll have to tune in next week to see. <laughs> yeah, I'm not giving it power rankings, but now it's who's the goal <laughs> this week with Shaka. It's it's a it's a moving target, Kay. It's a move. It's, 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 it's as everybody knows, I change my mind from time to time. Do we think that Shaka is fickle? No. I think he's forgetful. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm just. I just I've have been to accused say. of both. Uh, I've been accused of both fickle and forgetful. <laughs> but I'm sure you'll right. always be reminded of what you said right here. That's right. On extra and, and, time. And it won't bother me in the slightest I'm next sure week when I change my mind again. I'm sure it won't care to get in on the GOAT debate, or is it not one that you're interested in? No, I mean, in? Shaka does so well with it, he handles it <laughs> perfectly. I agree, I agree. Shaka is a very well-respected human being. Everything that he okay, says well, is now, correct. Now, Perfect. Now, now, thanks, now thanks Nita. Appreciate now that. crazy now. Yeah. Uh, don't forget, you can catch uh, ESPN FC every single day on ESPN+. Well Plus. What? Guess uh, who's in town? Working. Frank LeBoff. Oh! Oh, 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 oh uh, Frank is in! Next show, you'll Lee. be able to see him in the flesh, in person. Tune in. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.